Good morning, European traders. 29th of Jan here. Almost the end of the first month. Let's check out the uh, European Open here. Uh, weekend news. Pretty light, I have to say. Uh, mildly sterling negative, I would say, with this House of Lords business. And also some negative PMI news about to come out this week with the bankruptcy of uh, Carillon, uh, Carillon, whatever that uh, construction company is. But not much movement in FX. So let's get to the charts and get a plan together for today. And really, let's try and get a three-day plan together here. Uh, going forward. We'll start with our, our pal Aussie Yen. We had a move up to 50 on the Kuroda retraction news late uh, on Friday. But we closed at 11. This left hand side is still intact. We now have a situation where 87.73 is a place to add to core Aussie Yen shorts. This quadruple top up here is now making this level here, 87 and a quarter, firmly a neckline. Uh, we do expect this to trade. It's going to be a little bit wild these last three days of the month with all of this nonsense about moving uh, funds from bonds to equities and equities to bonds and of course, month-end flows with the U.S. stock market up 7.5%. Uh, we could see quite a severe month-end move. Um, but month-end is still two days away, so let's not get carried away. But waiting and watching is the theme for this early session here. But let's go through the charts. Uh, Euro-dollar looks like it wants to turn. We haven't made a lower low since Thursday's Trump Draghi nonsense uh, so we don't really have any kind of confirmation on that this trend line's still too far away to trade 123.40 today on what looks like is going to be a light day probably support more than anything um, but we see this long tail here. We couldn't get above 125 the figure on Friday. Now, the first move in Asia last night is lower, 123.85. This looks like it wants to turn, but nothing convincing yet. We're just watching. Cable, the news flow is negative. Looks like this is mispriced here. I can't, you know, it's hard for me to imagine that this whole Brexit thing is going to basically mean nothing for the currency and for the country. And we're approaching cable levels of sort of pre-Brexit levels. So it doesn't make a whole lot of sense to me. And even if they have a second referendum, there's too much water under the bridge here. Uh, this is most likely going to turn. Same type of pattern as the euro dollar and the dailies. We're getting lower highs now, but we are not getting lower lows. So we're kind of in a holding pattern here, waiting for a trigger. I believe that trigger might be PMI this week in the UK. Um, we'll have to see about that. Euro Swiss and Dollar Swiss on its knees. <laughs> this shit looks bad. People are just probing this downside in Euro Swiss. Uh, looking wondering, waiting for the SMB to kind of hang around. This looks like it's going to go. Uh, even if the SNB is around, they're not going to make the same mistake they made before and, and draw lines in sand and, and whatnot. Um, this looks very precarious. If this does go, and it is an exaggerated move, uh, Euro dollar will also go left. So keep in mind, Euro dollar and Euro Swiss almost argue it's kind of the same same trade these days so 
you might want to even use it as a trigger to sell Euro dollar. Dollar Swiss, on a valuation and rates perspective, it's way too low, but with Euro Swiss getting smoked, and I don't know, possible, you know, if we're at the end of the cycle eventually here at equities and maybe currencies are looking for forward looking on this, I don't know. I don't understand dollar Swiss. I'm definitely not trading it, but damn, we are firmly through uh, 94.20. Kind of looks like it wants to go to 90, but in the greater scheme of things, what is 90? 90 is the lower end of the range of dollar Swiss. I don't expect this thing to go to 85 or to 82, uh, and if U.S. yields continue higher. 90 is going to be very cheap, but again, don't get me wrong, there's no trade in uh, dollar Swiss right now. Dollar yen, we were long over the weekend after the Kuroda retraction comments. Uh, we squared that stuff up in Asia because we didn't really get what we wanted. It didn't, it should have really gone up to 109.50, which was where dollar yen was when Kuroda came on and spoke. So we're moving on from dollar yen. Again, it's sitting and waiting. That's a bearish bar on Friday. Uh, I don't pretend to understand these comments, but I think the market now is like, I think once you set it, you can't take it back. And the market is expecting change in policy. And if there is a change in yen policy, dollar yen can go lower. So. But again, no trade. We're waiting in dollar again. Euro sterling, these highs are mildly interesting, 87.90. If you want to play the sterling weakness, Euro sterling might be your guy. Uh, it's not strong enough to be a break trade. There's no sterling news today. And the 200 day moving average is 88.43. So. Maybe if we get a print up at the figure, this could be the pivot, 88 the figure. Or maybe we should be in accumulation mode, buying Euro Sterling on any dips here with a stop low uh, 87 and a quarter. Aussie Yen, we talked about that at the beginning. Still one of my favorites. I think this guy is going left still. We'll be adding through 87.70. May not happen today, but. We're patient. You can see Aussie, big green bar on Friday, but we've we came off that pretty hard with the Corona news, and now we're we seem to be kind of left hand side on on Aussie dollar. No trade yet. Just watching. Dollar CAD 123.90 is the big point. You have 60, but then up here is 90. Aussie, Aussie Kiwi, we got what we wanted on Friday. That was nice, right? Through 110. Um, we've gotten out of it. We don't really like or understand Aussie Kiwi, so we just grab the money, move on to the next trade. Um, that was interesting. Let's quickly talk cryptos. We all saw the $400 million that was stolen on the hack. Um, just amazing. The risk in cryptos is not the cryptocurrency, it's the middleman. Every single time, every single story. Just awesome how the middleman, who, the thing that the cryptocurrencies are going to eliminate, the middleman, is still fucking it up. Bitcoin looks fine, 11,000 bid. If you still have any longs on from 10,000 and you didn't sell any over the weekend, you can trade it now. You can trade sort of 12,000, 10,000, keep your core long, get your average in. Don't be afraid to take money off the table. Uh, you don't have to marry this stuff. You just have to trade the volatility. Ethereum, same thing. Uh, it looks pretty, looks pretty solid. 1,200. We went up to 1,250 over the weekend. You know, not much to say here. There's no real topside trade. There's no downside trade. Um, that's about it. So we're just kind of waiting and watching. Oh yeah, quickly dollar rand. Uh, 
eleven ninety four. You wanna you you wanna try getting long dollar rand on this pop here if it pops higher, just because this is overdone now. We're expecting some bad news out of South Africa. I can't remember in the last twenty years that we've had more than seven or eight months of good news. We've now had like four or five months of good news. Um, the bad news is coming, so the tactic here is to buy high ones. Buy as it goes up, not down, up. And once you've bought, have a look around, see if there's the bad news that's come out. If it has, great, hang on to it. And if it hasn't, just keep your wrist tight and set another trap on the top side for the eventual bad news that will come out of the intrepid South African country. All right, I've said enough today. Uh, Aussie yen downside, we've got these little dollars are traps set, and we wait, we watch. See you guys in New York Open.